Welcome to this mini lecture on assessment in curriculum planning. Let's begin by thinking back to this week's readings. Ask yourself the following questions and see if you can recall the information. What is assessment and why is it used? Why are we covering assessment before instruction in curriculum planning? What are three types of assessment and what are their purposes? What is the difference between validity and reliability in assessment? What is the difference between norm referenced and criterion referenced evaluation? What are the characteristics of good assessment instruments? What are the characteristics of performance and product assessments? At this time, it may be a good idea for you to pause the screen for a few moments and work through these questions by yourself. There are four primary purposes of educational assessment. Diagnosis. What do students know and need to know? Grading. How well did students demonstrate what they know? Instruction. What should the teacher focus on more in future lessons? And accountability. Are the teacher and students adequately engaging the target content? At its core, classroom assessment should be a process that supports and enhances student learning not something that merely documents what students know, understand, and can do. Now, there are three primary types of assessment. First, diagnostic assessment, also sometimes in the form of a pre-assessment prior to instruction. Here, the purpose is to determine what students know and need to know prior to instruction. Think here of the use of a TWL chart, basic questions, or even the use of a survey. Number two, formative assessment. Here the purpose is to determine if students are successfully integrating knowledge shared during instruction. Examples include students creating graphic organizers, an interactive class quiz in the form of a game, or a hand thermometer routine. Third, summative assessment, also sometimes in the form of a post-assessment following instruction. Here the purpose is to determine how well the students demonstrate that they know and understand content after instruction. Student-created portfolios, infographics, and essays are examples. Of course, all three of these kinds of assessment will ultimately also loop back into both the what and how of the teacher's future instruction. At this time, please revisit the supplemental must view resources section on Blackboard and view examples of the different kinds of assessment we have here discussed. Also remember that for the next part of your curriculum planning assignment, you will develop the assessment planning portion of your mini unit plan rooted in your content area and grade level and based on the organizing center and learning goals and objectives aligned to the TEAK standards you wrote last week. Please be sure to consult the sample of previous student work in the assignment description on Blackboard to see what your mini unit plan ideally should remember. In the following video, we will be covering the authentic assessment also known as the performance assessment. Thank you for your time, and please know that you can email me at any time if you have questions or desire to set up a Zoom appointment.